thank you so much for joining me. My name is Sharon Rogers and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. And every second and fourth Tuesday of the month, I come to you with an online class. Now the class is free to watch. However, if you would like a class kit so that you can create the projects that I am showing tonight, then all you need to do is place an order of $35 or more in my online store. The link is in the description of this video. It has already been pre-populated with the host code that you need to qualify for the class kit. You can also find that host code on my blog at stamperhood.com. If your order is $50 or more before shipping and handling and tax, not only will you receive the class kit at no additional charge, but you will also receive a package of embellishments. Might be a package of brass butterflies, might be a package of basic rhinestones, It'll be a surprise when you open your class kit. So tonight we're going to be focusing on using up some of those scraps. Now I personally try to use up my scraps as I'm going along. So anytime I'm creating, if I need a small piece of paper for a sentiment or a punch or a die, then I go to my scrap bin first. But that doesn't mean that my scrap bin isn't full and um, I, periodically try to weed those out and sort them out into colors and create something just with scraps. It helps stretch the dollar that I've spent on craft supplies, helps me feel good about that, helps me feel good about helping the environment without um, wasting so much. And the cards are pretty cute most of the time. As I'm creating tonight, I hope you will show me some love by giving me a thumbs up or a heart or sharing this video, making a comment. Just let me know what you think. It not only helps me to know what projects that you seem to like the most, but it also helps the algorithm and that means that I will be found a little bit easier next time by you and others. So thanks for sharing the love and I hope you like tonight's projects. We all have scraps. Here are some of my scraps. Um, I've already cut a few of them down as well, but you have leftover pieces based on the size layers that you're making. So you might as well use the most of them. And if you've got some time and you're just watching TV or doing something, you can go ahead and you can just cut them into strips of various widths. I'm not measuring at all, I'm just cutting. That is the beauty of this. You don't have to have everything uniformly um, cut. You can, however, if you would like that look, Obviously, you can do what you want. It's your paper, it's your leftovers, your scraps. But for now, I am just going and putting them on my cutter. Some are thin. I don't want them too thin because I do have to put glue on them. Although I'll show you a shortcut for that too. There we go. So we have a bunch of scraps. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna take a piece of basic black, this is a scrap also, and I'm gonna cut this down to three by four and a half. So there's the four and a half, and here's the three. And then I'm going to just simply glue these pieces on in an alternating pattern. Now, if you'll notice, this one is too short. I can change the angle so it's it doesn't need to be quite as long. It depends on what size, what length pieces that you have, but I do have longer ones too. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and generally I start somewhere near the middle where my longest piece is. That way I start with my longest pieces and I can make sure I can fit them all on there. And then I'm gonna take some glue. Now, if you're not going to leave any gaps, you can go ahead and put the glue all on this piece of cardstock. 
I have an example of that right here. So there are no gaps. And in fact, if I'm using this method, my starting layer can be basic white because it's all hidden. I know you think that there's a black layer here, but there's actually one between the colored cardstock and the black cardstock. But what I wanted to do was a little bit something, uh, something a little different. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on here. Oh, and I should be working on my silicone mat. so that I don't get any more glue on my table. And then you're just gonna go ahead and keep doing this. Except for I am leaving a little bit of space between the two. And here's why I can't just put glue on my bottom piece because I have this gap that I wanna, I don't want glue to show through. Now, if I have getting, if I'm getting towards the shorter ends, I, I see if my shorter ones will work. This one's a little bit too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one that I got out originally, but I always start at the end. Need a little bit more glue. And I just put my fingers in the glue. And I'm trying to keep the same width here. I really like having this black layer in between or this faux black layer in between. And then I'm gonna keep going. So it was Pacific Point, Bermuda Bay, Mango Melody. Let's go ahead and do Pacific Point. And you get the drift. So let's fast forward. Now here, I just need a little bit of this Bermuda Bay. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip off this excess. and adhere my glue there. There we go. Now, um, this glue, by the way, the green glue, is going up in price. Tombow has raised the price, so Stampin' Up! has to. Uh, it is going up $1.50 a bottle, so now is a great time to stock up. This is my absolute favorite adhesive. You know, it's the one that you will see me use the most. All right, and so this glue will dry on here and be, you'll be able to rub it off. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside to dry for just a second so when I'm cutting it, uh, my, my scissors aren't getting all gummy. In the meantime, I'm going to bring in a couple more scraps and I'm going to bring in the Amazing Thanks dies. Now, this was sold as a bundle I'm not sure if it was sold in this catalog as a bundle. I think it is. Um, so it's retiring as a bundle, but it is better to get them separately. And if you got nothing else, I think these dies are fantastic. I think the dies are worth getting. So we're going to put the more detailed one on the mango, and we're going to put the more um, the less detailed one on the black, and we're gonna run that through our Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. come out very easily. There's a couple of little pieces sometimes that stay. You can use your brush 
tip here to clean it, or you can just use the pokey one, which is what I'm using. And you can see those pretty much fell out. Now, I could have used the adhesive sheets on this, and I probably should have, however, I did not. So, I'm gonna show you that even if you don't use the adhesive sheets, it's really pretty easy just to put a little bit of glue on here. You could use a sponge to apply it. There we go. Then we're just gonna lay it down. Let's go ahead and bring this back in here. We're gonna lay it down and I start with one end and put it down. And then I just make sure it lines right up with the rest of it. You can force it into place. There we go. Let that adhesive dry a little bit and then we've got this fun little pop of color that we're gonna put over the top. To prepare my base, I have a note card and then I'm going to cut another base of black. I'm gonna cut this one slightly larger than the first one. I'm going to cut this at four and five eighths by three and one eighth. So there's three and one eighth, four and five eighths. And I have another little black strip to use at some point if I want, because I could have introduced the black strips instead of just letting them be a, a void in here. All right, so now we have this, and it looks like the glue is, is almost dry. I'm gonna flip it over like I've done here, and I'm just gonna trim off these edges. And you will have to probably take them off your scissors a little bit. To clean the glue off your scissors after you've done this, all you need to do is wipe it with a little bit of alcohol. And make sure that you're cutting all this color off. how fun this looks with the black in there also. And then we've just got just a tiny, tiny border on this slightly larger black piece. I love these three colors together. And you know, I hadn't thought about what color combination I wanted to talk about today, but then I saw them on my, I had removed the retiring cardstock from my cardstock holder and these three were stacked next to each other, and I thought, oh, those are gorgeous together. And so then you can put on this little thing. Now, it doesn't stand off quite as much on this one as it does on the other card, I think because, where is the other card? I think because there's more black in here, but see how, see how different the look is just with adding these little black spaces. And it looks like I got this one a little bit wider than the rest, but it still looks good in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these mini dimensionals, or what I should be using, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it, are the black mini dimensionals. Because they will show up less. These particular ones were left over from a paper pumpkin, I think. That's why they're so, the, the sheet is so small. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut some of the edges and apply them to spaces. That way we don't waste anything. Yeah, let's see. A 
couple more. Let's go with one here. And then we need one near the, t near the T. Right here, I guess. All right, let's go ahead and see. You can see that they're black underneath. So it just blends in with the black. I know it, you see it underneath, but in case you make a boo-boo and it sneaks off to the edge a little bit and somebody can see it when it's black, they're not gonna really be able to see it. Okay, and then we have, I think I'm gonna put this one on parallel to the bottom. There we go. Now we just need a little bit of adhesive to put it to the card. And we've got a nice thank you card. And so here are the two cards together. They're both striking in their own right. If you'd seen this one just to begin with by itself, you would have loved this probably. But if you're like me, you love this one even more. But it's your pick. You're going to get the supplies to make two of these in your card. And so you can either choose to um, do it this way, or you can do it this way, or you can do one of each. this next card I'm sticking with the same color theme and again I've got some scraps here that I've got um, these two are specific specifically sized and the black one instead of being the border is the inside one for this particular card and it measures two by five and this is two and an eighth by five and an eighth. Before we do anything with this, we need to take our scraps and do some punching. So you can use whatever punches you have. I'm using the one that coordinates with the Flowers of Friendship set. This is called Flowers and Leaves Punch. Now in your card kit, if you choose to get the class kit, you will receive these all punched out. So you will get four of the Pacific Point, and you will get four of the Melon Mambo, and you will get four of the Bermuda Bay. Too large, too small. This is a technique you, that you can use with any of your punches. Even just circles work great. Let me clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna bring in my silicone sheet again, and I'm gonna bring in that piece of basic black cardstock, and I'm going to just sort of place these on randomly. And I'm gonna alternate big and small ones, let's see. And also the orientation of them, so they're not all gonna be going the same direction. Uh, let's see, we could, we could do this here and this. Let's see, let's get another, let's get a big, big blue one. And then I think we need another one of, uh, one of these. All right, so that's roughly how I want it to look. We, are, we will do some trimming just like we did with the last one. Let's go ahead and get our green glue out. And I'm gonna pay attention to see where I need to glue because I don't really need to waste the glue. I don't, I'm gonna pick this up for where, um, where it won't be glued. Do something like that. And just the ends here are gonna be glued. And let's 
something like this here. Well, it's upside down, I think. It doesn't really matter. We're going to do something to this so it really won't matter whether your dies are right side up or wrong side. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Let's turn this a little bit. All right. Um, just on the upper part, I think, here. There. Just gonna let that glue set up for just a second. Um, in the meantime, what I can do, let me set this aside. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Bermuda Bay ink, which is somewhere. Here's my Bermuda Bay ink. And see, this is the Flowers of Friendship that went without punch. And so you can punch these two flowers out. But I'm gonna bring in the Something Fancy set. I'm gonna bring in this Happy Birthday greeting. And this Something Fancy is in the current mini catalog and it is carrying over, which is great because it has so many great sentiments and has so many great label dies. These dies by themselves are perfect, but they do fit those sentiments as well. We're gonna ink that up and stamp that right here. So it's a, it's a small happy birthday, but it's nice and bold. I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna go ahead and die cut that. I'm just gonna use a little washi tape. You could use a post-it note. I'm just gonna use a little washi tape to set that down where I want it to be. We will bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And die cut this. I like about this die is you may not be able to see it puts a little bit of an indentation around the border so it really gives that um, a little bit more of a dimensional look I'm going to keep my stamp and cut and emboss machine here but I'm going to trade out the plates I'm just going to be using that number one base plate and then I'm going to be bringing in an embossing folder and the number four plate. So I'm going to use this one. You can't currently get this one, but again, you can use whatever embossing folders that you have. I just happen to want to use this one. So I'm going to, and we need that piece of paper that we just stuck a bunch of flowers to. So that glue should be set up nicely now. I am going to trim this out. I'm going to do it off camera so I'm not getting it in my machine. I do like to trim before I emboss. It's easier cutting flat stuff than it is cutting stuff with um, some embossing on it. That goes for wet embossing and dry embossing. Right, so I have this all done now. Those colors look so good on black. Ugh. I'm just going to put this in with this embossing folder. And this is kind of the bubbles looking one. 
it's not really just polka dots. It's really not. And this is the one that comes in the Basics 3D folder. There's three of them. There's a cross hatch. There's this one. And then there's uh, one other one that I have forgotten off the top of my head. But look and see what you get. So can you see the fun dimension that you have there? And it almost looks like this is just one sheet of paper that you've embossed. So some people call this the quilting method. Haven't done it for a number of years. But you know how a lot of times quilters will applique things on and then they will quilt over the top of it. So it gives you that effect here. Now we're gonna bring in our Melon Mambo piece. We're gonna go ahead and layer that on. And this is just a little bit bigger all the way around. All right. I'm gonna bring in a card base of Bermuda Bay. Again, this is one of the colors that's leaving. I'm gonna put this right here, and I'm not gonna put it on with dimensionals because I'm going to put the greeting on with dimensionals. You don't want too many dimensions going on here. Plus, this already has some dimension to it because of the bumps. Let's go ahead and just put that right here. Now for my little greeting here, I'm gonna go back to my mini white dimensionals. And this is gonna go right here, mostly off. So I'm gonna put my dimensionals closest to the bottom. Bottom is down here because of how I flipped it. Take off these. We're just going to put that right. Now, of course, you could put it wherever you wanted to. I wanted to put it off to the side a little bit. And so there we have a quick and easy card. It really was pretty easy. This is going to be the center, uh, the inside. Bermuda Bay is a little too dark to write on. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. I should have stamped this first, shouldn't I? Whatever greeting I want inside. Let's see what there is in the something fancy set. Um, I didn't forget your birthday, I'm just stretching out the celebration. I think I'm gonna go with that one because I'll probably be late for somebody's birthday. And we just need that Bermuda Bay ink again. Oh, I caught an edge. That's okay, because I did have something planned for the inside anyway. I was gonna put in A little flower wasn't really gonna put it right there but I guess that's where I'm gonna put it right now if I'm pretty careful I probably could go ahead and stamp over the top of this I wonder what it looks like in Bermuda Bay when I do that Not very good. Now I can't send you a stamped one because that's against Stampin' Up! policy. But that doesn't mean I can't stamp one for the video and cut it out. Show this 
think it's in here. I could just do that one. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do instead of just, instead of doing all of it, I think I'll just do this one. Had I not caught that edge though, what I could have done is taken this border and just put it along the bottom, which I still could do that, but I've already got something going on in there. So we're gonna call this a day for this card, but just pretty simple on the outside. Now, if you wanted to add a little bit more something something to this, you certainly could. You could add some Pearl Basics. These pearls are going, let's, let's do the pearls. My birthday card club met last night and we did the rhinestone basic jewels instead of the pearls. Well, I let them pick. I did the basic rhinestones. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see, the pearls will look equally as stunning, I think. And they, they've got that same kind of shape. So there's that. Let's go ahead and put another one in here. And I, I don't think we're done yet. I think we want some more. But we have to have an odd number, remember? So let's go right there. There's five, but I'm not done yet. I still want more. And one more. They're just embellishments, so you can put as many as you want on. In fact, we're getting to be such a high number now that I don't even know that it matters if I count how many there are. There's an even number, but I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna rebel against my own rules. And so that just adds, adds a little extra something too. But you can easily keep them off as well. Because I love the By the Bay Designer Series paper, I have lots of scraps left over. And so what you can do with some of them is cut them up into small pieces, small little strips, sort of like we did before. And I'm gonna cut them of varying widths and lengths, but most of them will be right around half an inch probably. And I'm just gonna take you know, then from, you know, anywhere from one and a half to two, a little bit over two maybe in size. Now I've already got a couple of them done. So let's see what we can do with this. I have a piece of mint macaron. And I have another piece of basic white. Let's go ahead and take some of these strips and just start arranging them. And there's not necessarily a right or a wrong way. Probably wanna have patterns, um, ones that have strong patterns, not right next to each other. Here's a little one, so maybe I'll put this one on the end and I'll graduate up. Let's see here. It really is just a matter of playing around until you get what you what you're going for. You'll probably know it when you see it. I think I'll wait and put this one a little bit later on somewhere. Yeah, let's see. Get another one. I need a little bit more of a pattern here. Here we go. 
I'm just sort of putting these all any which way. Let's see, can I sneak this one down a little bit? Yes, I can. That looks that looks pretty good. So what I'll do next is I'm just going to start one at a time and glue them down. And then the next one's just butt right up next to the previous one. And you want to stagger the ends a little bit. So there we have just our strips kind of laid down right there. I'm going to bring in a sentiment. And this sentiment comes from the Wildlife Wonder stamp set. And it's going to be sending birthday wishes. I'm going to bring in a scrap of basic white. And let's use our Knight of Navy ink. Get some nice contrast here. Actually, I might like it better with mint macaron. Let's let's see which one we like best. We're just gonna stamp this right here. Hopefully, we get it straight. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we can get off a of. mint macaron a little scrap here. All right, I have a little scrap here that I found. I'm going to cut this just a little bit longer than a half an inch, or a little bit wider than half an inch, I should say. Let's go ahead, ink this up again. All right, let's call that good. And we'll need to, let's just cut this off like this. See how that looks. You can see which one we like best. Let's go ahead and put our basic white onto our card base. And let's see, if I were to trim this one, we could have the white there, or we could have, hmm, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the mint. So let's go ahead and put this up on some dimensionals. just to help it stand off a little bit. Looks like my trimmer needs a little, I need, I need to trade out the blades, I think, leaving a little bit of paper residue here. Let's see, do I want it all the way over? Nope, right here, I think. And so there we have just a very, very simple card. And we'll put a layer of basic white in the middle. We can put that right here and then we can either stamp or we can use up some more of my scraps here and put that on the inside of the card somewhere. Um, let's cut this down. It is a scrap after all, so we can we can do that without feeling guilty. And let's go with five and a quarter. Let's see if we can put this along the bottom edge. 
nope, I think I'm gonna like it better over here. So we'll put it along the top edge. Or side edge. You know what I mean. We'll just trim this off. And we can stamp another greeting in here. Or we could even bring in um, our Seaside Bay set and we could um, stamp Let's see, we've got some, let's stamp some birds maybe, right along the bottom. How about that? We'll put those in the Knight of Navy as well. I'm going to go ahead and just protect this edge a little bit. And we'll get the birds running off the edge. How about that? There we go. And let's gonna let's do the well, we're not going to do a you are pro rare precious just because doesn't quite go with that. I got birds, not pearls there. So we'll go back to the Wildlife Wonder set. And how about you mean so much to me? That's in the same font as the original that we stamped. It's a mixed font though. So there really isn't you know, a problem using a different stamp set for that reason. You mean so much to me. There we go. And we have a birthday card ready to go. So again, just using a bunch of strips up, you can get a pretty card that um, really makes the most of the paper that you've purchased. And it just gives an interesting look. You can add some pearls or anything. I'm going to use these flat adhesive backed pearls that were designed to go with this suite by the Bay Suite. Let's go ahead and put some on here. I should use my take your pick tool, but let's put one right here and we'll put another one right here. Let's go ahead and put one right up here. Just add a little bit of bling. These are very, very shiny and iridescent. They're very pretty. And there's another scrappy card. I love this by the bay designer series paper pack and it's six by six and a normal card front size is four and a quarter by five and a half so when you're putting on some designer series paper a four inch width works perfectly which means you have two inch widths left over I'm going to take these two inch widths and I'm going to cut them to one and seven eighths And I need four of these pieces. So this will only get me three. I love this seashell paper. 
there's really not many designs in this paper pack that are not nice. Uh, let's go ahead and just cut this one first. Did this, and then we'll do this. All right, so now I have four squares. I'm going to bring in a piece of mint macaron. This is a retiring color. And the first thing I need to do is cut a strip that is one half inch by 11. So I cut right down that edge. And then I need a piece that is six by six. So here's six and here's six. Now I could score with my paper trimmer, but because we're on camera, I'm going to use my Simply Scored tool. It gives better defined score lines. I'm going to score at two inches and four inches. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and score at two inches and four inches. We're making a little May basket. So it could have been an Easter basket had we done it before Easter. So this is kind of like a, a tic-tac-toe grid or a birdie bunch grid. Uh, there's Alice right there in the middle in case you can't see her. Uh, but we are going to cut this line right here, this line right here, this one, and this one. So they have to be opposite each other, and you only go up to that first score line. This makes an easy, easy basket. I'm gonna go ahead and fold on all our score lines. And you can do this before or after you cut, doesn't matter. To make our basket, we're gonna fold in these points. And you can make your basket of, of any, um, you can vary the size just in how much you bring these sides in. So if you don't bring the sides in too much, and you have this nice little V in here, that's a bigger basket than if you bring them in so that those sides touch. For my purposes today, I'm going to have those sides touch. Again, doesn't really matter, you can do what you want. Now, to get started here, because I'm using up my scraps and I wanna hide the staples that are gonna pull this basket together. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pieces that I cut and I'm going to adhere them only on two sides, two edges. And I want to use the two that um, are, are this way. I don't want to put the, the two over here. Um, I'll show you why. Let me get done with it. So here we have these two. We're going to add the other two, of course, later. But this is a trick to hide uh, the staples. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in. And remember that strip that we cut initially? That's going to go in between. So it's going to go right here. And these guys get folded over the top and the blank one gets folded in last. You can see where this comes down here. I don't want that to show. So I just pull it up just a hair. All right, so I've got those done. And now I'm going to bring in my stapler and I'm gonna staple down here. And I wanna make sure that I'm not stapling over the edge of this square because we're gonna now put this over here and it's the staple is hidden. 
I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We want to make sure that the this piece is inside. And here's a trick for you. Go ahead and just kind of run your finger. It's almost like curling ribbon. You want to get that to curl nicely. So we're gonna we're gonna bring these two edges together. Make sure my basket handle does not show through the bottom. And again, we're going to staple those pieces together. Now let's go ahead and add on our designer series paper pieces. Here's one, and here's another. Now I'm just gonna fill this with the candy that I have at home right now, which are Hershey's Kisses. But wouldn't it be fun to fill this with a little bit of, of Easter grass or, you know, something like that, and then put in some of those seashell candies, you know, those little chocolate candies that are shaped like seashells. Let's see, here we go. We have a little basket and holds it. Now, if you want to go ahead and give a little bit more sturdiness, you can go ahead and put just a little bit of glue in here by the top of the handle or where the handle meets the top of the basket. You can do that on both sides. There we go. And that'll just set up and be extra sturdy. If you wanted to, let me take the candies out for a second. If you wanted to cover up these staples, you could certainly cover up those staples using um, using the designer series paper as well. But if you're going to be putting um, some filler in there or even just a bunch of candy in there, that's going to be covered up. Nobody's going to notice. Put these back in here. If you want to just create a little tag to dangle off of here, you could. Let's go ahead and bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I have plates one, two, and three. I am using the Seaside Bay dies. And specifically, I am using this one right here, which is a clamshell. Oyster shell, clamshell, I think it's a clamshell. And here's a scrap, keeping with our theme, a scrap of mint macaron. I'm gonna go ahead and run that through, and this creates a tag. It's kind of cool. rid of this, take it out of the way. All right, and so this is what we get. It's got two little score lines here. So it has a bit of a thickness, which is perfect. We can bring in some of the white baker's twine. Let's go ahead and well, you could write who it's to and from here, like a, like a normal tag. Let's see if we can find a pen. Uh, you could also stamp it. There's nothing that um, in this particular stamp set though that would, you know, not a to and a from or, or any kind of saying that I'd want to use, but um, it could, it could just be, oh, this pen is not prepared to write. Could just come in here and just write a little sentiment. So I'm gonna give it to the person anyway, or it could be a secret, secret gift, I suppose. Although I am not secretly writing love you lots to somebody, that's for sure. 
And we could just go ahead and tie this on here. Let's go ahead and trim this. I'm going to loop this around and tie a bow in the front. Just makes this a little bit prettier. Let's go ahead and even up the ends a little bit. There we go. Trim these ends. And so now here's I'm going to lose lose the candy showing you. But here we have our little tag. Love you lots. And you can just fold that over a little bit more, make it stay closed a little bit more. Um, you could have punched a hole in here and threaded it through if you prefer to do that. But just a cute little basket. Again, I'm so grateful that you decided to spend some time with me tonight and watch this class. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you've been inspired to tackle some of the scraps in your scrap bin. Remember, if you place an order in my online store of $35 or more before shipping and handling, I will send you the class kit for free, no additional charge. It will allow you to create two of each of the cards and one of the basket that I made tonight. If your order is $50 or greater, I will also provide you with a package of embellishments because who doesn't like a little extra bling on their cards? Have a great rest of your week and I will see you in two weeks for another Tune In Tuesday. If you want to watch a little bit sooner than that, I also go live every Friday night on YouTube at 7.30, so I hope you'll join me then as well.